Let's analyze the effect of a plant asset disposal. Disposal is a term we use for getting rid of a plant asset. There are three ways you can get rid of a plant asset. The first one is to trash it, you just throw it away. The second method is to trade it in. You return what you have, trade it in for a newer model or a different plant asset. The third method is to sell it. Whenever you dispose of plant assets, you need to do two things. Bring depreciation up to date and then remove the asset and related accumulated depreciation account from your books. If you're getting rid of an asset for no proceeds, which means you're not selling it, you're trashing it, you're going to debit accumulated depreciation, which means you're removing the accumulated depreciation on that asset, and then you're going to credit the equipment, which means you're removing the equipment from your equipment account. This journal entry will remove your equipment and the related accumulated depreciation from your books. Now, a lot of times companies don't trash their assets. They'll end up selling an asset. When you sell an asset, you receive cash in exchange for that asset. If you exchange cash, you need to figure out whether you have a gain or a loss from the sale of that asset. To determine if you have a gain or a loss from the sale of that asset, you need to compare the cash you received from selling that asset against the book value on the date of sale. If the cash you received is greater than the book value, then you have a gain. If the cash you received is less than the book value, then you have a loss. The third way that a company can get rid of their existing assets is by exchanging it for a new asset. We're not going to spend too much time on exchanging plant assets, but just know that we need to remove the old asset from our books, add the new asset to our books, and if there's a difference between a fair value of your old asset and the book value, you record a gain or a loss. Let's take a look at an example for a sale of a plant asset. On January 1, 2010, Brandy Corp purchased a machine for $10,000 and decided to depreciate the machine for five years using the straight line method with zero residual value. On March 31st of 2012, Brandy Corp sold the machine for $5,000. Journalize the entry relating to the sale of the machine. Whenever you're doing a sale of an asset, the first step is to record your depreciation expense up to the date of the sale. The date of the sale is March 31st, 2012, so you need to figure out how much is your depreciation expense for 2012. How do you calculate it? You know that depreciation expense is equal to cost, which is $10,000, minus residual value, which is zero, divided by estimated useful life, which is five years. That gives you a depreciation expense of 2000 per year. That 2000 we just calculated is for the whole year, but in 2012, we only held the asset for three years. We sold it on March 31st, 2012. So for your depreciation expense for 2012 would be the 2000 that you calculated times 3 by 12. You had the asset for January, February, and March, and you sold it at the end of March. So we need to prorate that depreciation by multiplying it by 3 by 12, which gives you $500. Your depreciation expense for 2012 is 500 Now let's record that depreciation. You know that whenever you record your depreciation, the two accounts involved are depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a permanent account and it has all the accumulated depreciation for that asset. Now, what would be the beginning balance of your accumulated depreciation account? Let's first calculate that and put that in. You know that you depreciate the asset $2,000 in 2010. You also depreciated $2,000 in 2011, which means your balance brought forward in your accumulated depreciation account is $4,000. That would be for the two years, 2010 and 2011. Now for 2012, your journal entry is going to be debit depreciation expense 500, credit accumulated depreciation 500. That will give you a ending balance of 4500 in your accumulated depreciation account. Now make note that your accumulated depreciation is 4500 
because we're going to use that in our next step, which would be to calculate the gain or loss on the sale of this asset. To calculate the gain or loss on the sale of the asset, you take your sales proceeds minus your book value. Sales proceeds are what the amount of money you receive for selling your asset. In this case, how much money did we receive for selling the asset? We received $5,000. So your sales proceeds are $5,000. Next, we subtract the book value. You know that book value is cost, which is $10,000, minus accumulated depreciation, which was $4,500, which is we, what we calculated in step one. Now we can calculate our gain or loss. It turns out that we have a loss of $500. Now, all we have left to do is to journalize the transaction. Whenever we are journalizing the transaction, remember that you have your machine, which is that 10,000, and your accumulated depreciation, which is 4,500. Those will not be there after the sale of your asset. After you sell the machine, those will have to be removed from your book. So your journal entry has to take into account all that. So let's take a look at your journal entry. You're going to have a column for debits and you're going to have a column for credits. You know that you received $5,000 cash for selling the machine. If cash increases, we're going to debit cash for $5,000. or for $5, You also know that you have a loss on sale. We calculated a loss of $500. Losses, as you know, are treated just like expenses for journal entries, so you're going to debit your loss of $500. Now let's look at what else gets debited. You know that accumulated depreciation has a credit balance of $4,500. To zero it out, we have to debit $4,500. So we'll also go ahead and debit accumulated depreciation for $4,500. Your machine account has a debit balance of $10,000. And once you sell the machine, that machine account will have to be removed from your books. So what we need to do is we need to credit, credit the machine for 10000 and that will get rid of the machine account from your books. So the journal entry to record a sale of an asset will have four items. It will have cash, which is the amount you received for selling the asset. It will have a gain or a loss, which is you, what you calculate comparing your sales proceeds to the book value. You will get rid of the accumulated depreciation for the asset and you will get rid of the asset from your book. So it will always have these four items. For this particular example, we ended up with a loss on sale of our asset. So we ended up debiting the loss. But if we have a gain on a sale of an asset, you're going to end up crediting the gain. For debit credit rules, treat a loss just like an expense treat a gain just like a revenue. So losses are normal debit balances and gains are normal credit balances.